Good evening and welcome to Asian American Advancing Justice Los Angeles 37th annual anniversary and the first ever virtual celebration. My name is David Ono and I am a longtime friend of Advancing Justice LA and news anchor for ABC 7 Eyewitness News. I'm actually here in our Eyewitness News studios in Glendale, California. Welcome to my home away from home. I'll be your host for this evening's virtual program and I've had the honor and pleasure of serving as an MC for this event for several years. Today, I am particularly excited as I did not have to battle ballroom network chatter for your attention. Our audience is relatively captive this year in COVID safe style. We are virtual via YouTube, Facebook and Advancing Justice LA's website. And even though we cannot do the usual networking in the Bonaventure Ballroom, we encourage chatting online if you are on Facebook Live or on YouTube. So I'm your guide for this evening as we share inspirational stories about Advancing Justice LA and celebrate contributions of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders, particularly during this difficult and unprecedented time. Now, over the past 37 years, Advancing Justice LA has become one of the nation's leading civil rights organizations. As with many nonprofit organizations, Advancing Justice LA has faced many challenges during this COVID-19 pandemic, yet the staff and board have continued to work hard to serve individuals in need and to lift up our communities. So tonight we bring you a celebration of unity, action and love. Tonight you'll hear from several speakers who will tell their stories of being called to action. And as they share these stories, we hope that you will be inspired to continue or create your own call to action. Your call can be to volunteer to help seniors, to encourage friends to vote, to donate to a charity, or to simply thank our frontline workers. Now, please take a look at our year in action. We are lawyers, social justice warriors, people who care. We are Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles, a civil rights and legal services nonprofit fighting for equity and peace for Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. I would say we have to take a leap at the same time to making the policy change that will be necessary for true equality. This year, we faced an avalanche of unprecedented challenges. As the coronavirus impacts communities around the globe, here at home, Asian Americans are facing more than just the fear of contracting the virus. They say that hurtful and misleading language from our nation's leaders are now making things worse. We collaborate with others to make sure incidents of hate are not brushed aside. We fight for a more equitable and harmonious society. We are starting to come together. The question is, can we make that leap from the protest to policy change? I think that's the test for all of us. Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles has become stronger, better prepared to serve our communities in need especially now in the time of COVID-19. There has been no safety net for undocumented workers pushed further to the fringes during this pandemic. In Mandarin, Thai, Tagalog, Korean, Vietnamese, Khmer, Punjabi. We distributed in less than eight weeks over $4 million in state funds to undocumented individuals who needed help. We are empowering our communities to vote, to be counted, to become citizens, and to better help our communities in 2020, we enter our next exciting chapter. Our new CEO, Connie Chung Jo, is a civil rights attorney and an esteemed community leader. And we are a majority minority state. We are serving all of these underserved com communities that make up the majority of California. So we are really, should be the majority and the forefront of the movement. With her, we will not stop until peace and equity are achieved. We are united in action. We are Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us for our 2020 virtual gala. 
More than ever before, Advancing Justice LA is so thankful for your support in a year unlike any other. We've been through quite a bit this year, haven't we? A global health pandemic, police violence, racism and civil unrest, a struggling economy, destructive fires, and an uncertain future. If this year has taught us anything, it's reminded us of the resilience of the human spirit. It's also reminded us of the importance of the critical work of organizations like Advancing Justice LA. Our theme this year is United in Action, which is something we all hope to see in a year filled with division and conflict. By focusing on the shared priorities of security, safety, and society, we can and will make a positive difference. In this spirit tonight, we celebrate Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders who have overcome barriers to work together to take action. And in a little bit, you'll have a chance to meet this year's honorees. But before we do, I want to share one of the top highlights of the year for Advancing Justice LA. And that's our selection of our new CEO, Connie Chung Jo. For many of you who have been part of Advancing Justice LA's journey, and in particular this past year, you're aware of the many barriers we had to overcome to get to this point. Thanks to your support and faith, along with the tireless work of our board and steward, I'm happy to inform you that we've successfully brought on our new leader. For those of you who don't know Connie, you will meet her tonight. And while we only have limited time to talk about what makes her great, I hope you'll find some time to meet with her sometime soon. Despite her onboarding during COVID, despite joining our organization during our historical transition, and despite the intense demands of our work around social justice, she seamlessly come on board and jumped right in with purpose and vision. And in a short time, she's made a greater impact than we could have expected. Thanks to an amazing staff and Connie's leadership, I'm proud to say that Advancing Justice LA is steadily gaining strength, momentum, and making progress. And as we face a future filled with uncertainty, you can be assured that Advancing Justice LA will be moving ahead with full force to build a stronger, a safer, and a socially just community for us all. It's my pleasure to introduce our new CEO, Connie Chung Jo. Thank you, Nita, for that introduction and for your dedication and leadership through the challenges. I am honored to speak to so many of you for the first time as CEO of Advancing Justice LA. I know you are logged on from many different places around the country and the world, and I thank you for tuning in. To be honest, when I was first approached about this position, I wasn't interested. I'd started my career as a public interest attorney for seven years, working at the ACLU in Chicago and the Housing Rights Center. I left in part because I didn't see my community members being served at these mainstream organizations. So I spent the last 11 years as the executive director of KFAM, happily leading a social service organization for Koreans and other Asians. But then two things happened. First, COVID hit and we saw a surge of anti-Asian hate crimes and discrimination. And our community was scapegoated for the virus. Second, we saw the murder of George Floyd and a public reckoning around systemic racism and anti-blackness in our society that I've never seen in my lifetime. And I thought about how when my kids and grandkids study about COVID in US history class, and they ask me, what was I doing then? I wanna say I was doing my part to protect our civil rights and fighting for a more just and equitable world. Coming to Advancing Justice LA now allows me to return to my civil rights roots while also continuing to work with the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities. My vision for Advancing Justice LA is this, to continue to be boots on the ground with direct services to represent those who are being held in detention centers, domestic violence survivors trying to leave their abusers, immigrants on their pathway towards their citizenship, and so many other community members. We have the knowledge to be strategic about advocating for policies that uplift and protect our communities 
as well as the legal capacity to bring impact litigation to force change where there is injustice. And today, we see so much injustice to be fought. We will work to change hearts and minds about racism against Asian Americans. And to gain that allyship, we too need to be allies to the Black, Latinx, LGBTQ, and other marginalized communities. I've hit the ground running. With the election just weeks away and vote centers opening in LA in just days, we are operating voter helplines in five major languages, monitoring vote centers, ensuring that ballots are cast and that every vote is counted. Poll monitoring will be underway with our attorneys and volunteers. My call to action is to continue the fight against Asian racism. We are beefing up our legal efforts to fight discrimination, whether that's holding the hands of victims who need to navigate the system or protecting tenants who are being threatened by eviction unfairly because of COVID. We are tracking incidents of hate in our Stand Against Hatred website and changing hearts and minds through a new public awareness campaign. It's a long road ahead, but we can do it with your help. I am so excited by the incredible work ahead and so grateful to our board, staff, and supporters who have brought us to this point. But there is no question that the single most important force that has brought Advancing Justice LA to where it is today is Stuart Quo. He built this organization from the ground up and dedicated his entire career to protecting the rights of our Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities. He is our founder, former executive director for 35 years, a MacArthur Genius Awardee, and our newly minted President Emeritus. Thank you, Stuart, for your vision, dedication, and passion to Advancing Justice LA and protecting the rights of our community. Thank you and welcome to Connie. Connie will be great as our new CEO for Advancing Justice LA. What is the importance and legacy of Advancing Justice LA? It is evident in many of our past achievements, such as working with the family of Vincent Chin for awakening the community on the importance of fighting hate crimes. On the aftermath of LA's 1992 civil unrest to help all of the victims and to build strong multi-ethnic coalitions on working on the freedom of 72 Thai garment workers. This year marks its 25th anniversary of courage, dedication, and perseverance of all of the workers and staff. Almost all of the Thai garment workers are U.S. citizens today, thanks to your support. I will continue to be involved in supporting this work. My call to action is to reinstate affirmative action and to allow California to consider diversity as a factor in public education, employment, and contracting. We will unite to fight to end anti-Asian violence in all of its forms. We will continue to emphasize the importance of building strong coalitions with other disenfranchised groups. I will continue working with all of you to make an impact on our community and our society. Thank you for your support and partnership. We will continue the fight. Hello, Stuart. As a surprise to you, I'm here to offer my best wishes to you in all of your endeavors. My own association with Stuart goes way back to the 60s when my dear friend Beulah Quo was advocating for more non-stereotypical roles for actors like me. I first met Beulah's son, Stuart, when he was a young boy. Over the years, I have been impressed with Stuart's work fighting for the rights of the underserved. He founded a small organization that started in a church meeting room that became the large organization that it is today. Thank you, Stuart, for your years of leadership. Here's to you, Stuart. Keep fighting the good fight, my friend. Like Nita, Stewart, and Connie, I have been enraged by the recurring racism against Asians throughout American history. And my call to action is to continue to fight against racism in this country. 
The backlash against Asian Americans as a result of comments coming out of Washington, D.C. about the China virus has spread nationwide. We all felt it. As a former prisoner in two American concentration camps during World War II, I understand what it is to be a victim of hate. Today, I see similar sentiments against Asians as scapegoats because of a belief that we are responsible for this terrible thing called COVID-19. In response to these hate crimes, I am proud that my fellow SAG and AFTER members and the Ad Council stepped forward to produce PSAs with strong anti-hate messages. Please take a look. Imagine a stranger spitting in your face. Getting assaulted for wearing a face mask. Or getting punched in the face for not wearing one. Seeing your children attacked with a knife. And blamed for a virus that has killed hundreds of thousands of people. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 in the United States, hate incidents against Asian Americans have been on the rise. In these unprecedented times, our country needs unity, not division. Let's come together and wash the hate. I hear someone go, didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed and I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. I donate my plasma. I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. A chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight, Fight the virus. virus. Fight, Fight the virus. virus. We're living at a time when humanity matters most. Even though we're physically apart, we must all come together as one. Yes, we're worried about our health, our loved ones, job prospects, our nation. It's a scary time, but we can't let fear turn into hate. Far too many people are using this crisis as an excuse to forget reason and embrace racism. Asian Americans have been the victims of verbal and physical harassment during the COVID-19 pandemic. Law enforcement has recorded a surge in hate crimes aimed at our community. Families have been shunned businesses vandalized. People are attacked on public transportation and children bullied and called hurtful names. Can you imagine what it's like to face this kind of behavior at a time like this? That's what many of us across America are dealing with during this crisis. And the number of incidents, you know, <laughs> they will rise, I'm afraid so. We must all stop the stigma. We must all stop the xenophobia. We must all stop the hate. This crisis has revealed some of our strengths. Communities virtually coming together to raise money, feed people, lift spirits up. So let's make sure ending this behavior becomes one of our strengths. Stand up against racism when we see it. Support local Asian American business owners. Take care of your neighbors. We will get through this with empathy, care, and love of our fellow man, woman, and child. As members of SAG-AFTRA and as Americans, we know our strength is in our diversity. We are always stronger together. Thanks again to SAG, AFTRA, the IW Group, and to the Ad Council for those important PSAs. Now, in a related and poignant story about hate crimes, I would like to introduce the story of a humble postal worker named Joseph Ileto, who in 1999 was a victim of a horrible hate crime. Called to action, the Ilettos have been a leading force in fighting hate. It was really hard for the family that summer of 1999. Yeah. We lost our father in a heart attack. My brother took on the father figure of the family. And he was just a, a very easygoing person that... Uh, very soft-spoken. Soft-spoken. A man with a high-powered assault rifle opens fire inside a Jewish community center. 
five people are wounded, including three young boys. Our mail letter carrier had made his first stop uh, when he was accosted by as an and yet I unidentified assailant. He stated that the postal worker was a good, quote unquote, target of opportunity to kill because he was, quote unquote, non-white. When our brother was killed, he was just mentioned as a postal worker. No name, no identity, no race. I'm tired of the prayers that are always given to our victims. I'm tired of hearing all oh, sympathies and condolences. Do something. Let's do something to change the laws that would better the lives of everyone here. When there's gun violence, the bullet doesn't stop because of the color of our skin or what race or religion. It doesn't stop. It's going to kill you. And we want it to stop. We had the honor of playing a part in choosing the awardee this year. But first, we'd like to acknowledge someone from the San Francisco Bay Area, Julia Wynn. We have no doubt she will have a tremendous future and will be a great leader in the Asian American community. We'd like to announce this year's winner, the late John Eric Swing. John Eric Swing was 48 years old. He served as a U.S. Marine Reservist, then was executive director of a nonprofit for Filipino Americans in Los Angeles. His organization started a food delivery project to help others during this pandemic. He contracted coronavirus in mid-June. He died 12 days later. Swing leaves behind six children and his wife, Ellen. May his memory be a blessing. From being a probation officer, influencing the youth, to helping and inspiring immigrants, to achieve their American dreams. We are proud to recognize his legacy and his accomplishments. John Eric Swing, congratulations. congratulations. It is with great honor to receive this award on behalf of my husband, John Eric Swing, a community servant and an advocate for the Los Angeles Filipino American Asian community and beyond. His untimely passing to COVID-19 brought great sorrow to us, his family and friends. But the recognitions of his life's work like this, that brings us some form of consolation, knowing that his legacy of service will stay. His dedication and commitment did not go unnoticed and may potentially inspire others to carry on the good work. I would like to thank the kind-hearted Dina, and Ismael Ileto, the rest of the Ileto family, and the wonderful staff of Asian American Advancing Justice LA for selecting John for this inaugural award, the Joseph Ileto Courage Award. Our family is forever grateful that you have selected John to be your first ever awardee and for giving him the recognition that he so deserves. Thank you. I'd also like to thank SIPA board and staff for connecting us to the Ilettos and for, for giving John the platform to channel the pas his passion for community service. I would also like to thank COFAC for giving him more opportunity to serve. John will not be in our midst to serve any longer, but I know and I believe that he is enjoying the fruits of his labor with his creator on behalf of John Eric Swing's family, thank you. Hi, I'm back and I want to send congratulations to John Eric Swing on winning the Joseph Iletto Award. This is just one aspect of the many important projects underway by Advancing Justice LA as a nonprofit. This organization is hard at work and I would like to invite you all to show your support. 
As all of you watching this know, we have been living with this terrible virus that has claimed the lives of so many. Despite the scapegoating that is being done to try and blame our communities for COVID-19, we know that there are countless AA and HPIs who risk their lives to get us through this challenging time. Advancing Justice LA is grateful to the healthcare professionals, firemen, teachers, food service workers, and countless others who are on the front line of this astounding disease. We also want to thank and honor our Asian American essential workers who keep things running for us and take a look at this short video. Three weeks ago, I started out with a census of maybe five COVID patients, five or so patients in, in respiratory distress. Last I checked, we now have over 350 patients with COVID in the hospital. The first thing that my parents told me when all of this started was, don't be a hero. But I know you're not going to listen to me. <laughs> hospital workers are all lost in there, you know, and really kind of working 12, 13 hour days and everybody wanted to support. Tofu, stir fries, just very simple Vietnamese comfort foods. It just reminds me of home. People that reach out, people that buy me a meal, the people that that let me know that they're there. It's the only thing that really keeps me going on this thing. terms, you know, when, you know, you're a cook on the line and you're behind 40 minutes on tickets, all you can do is put your head down and keep going and knowing that the service will end and the night will end and you'll be drinking a beer, watching TV in a couple hours and you just have to get through this part and it always does and so maybe that, maybe that'll help somebody down the line. My name is Melissa King, and I'm the winner of Bravo's Top Chef All-Stars Season 17 in Los Angeles. I'm so sorry if that was a spoiler for anyone. You should, you should go check it out. It was a pretty good one. <laughs> but I wanted to just say thank you so much to Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles for giving me the opportunity to um, pay tribute to our frontline workers, um, particularly those within the food and beverage industry, who, which we all know are having a very difficult time throughout this pandemic. And, you know, a lot are the Asian American communities and those restaurants, those small mom and pop restaurants that are our favorites that are having the hardest time. Uh, a lot are owned by small families and I just I want to do what I can as a chef to support where I can and I hope all of you can join me in that effort and take action today at this anniversary and do what we can to support local restaurants so thank you so much for having me um, take care bye hello my name is Jack Ye and I serve as co-chair of Advancing Justice LA's board development committee my name is Philip Lee, and I serve as co-chair with Jack, and also one of the chairs of this year's virtual celebration. Jameson, my family, and I all strongly believe in Advancing Justice LA's mission to advocate for civil rights, provide legal services and education, and build coalitions to positively influence and impact the lives of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. And as we all know, the work we do here at Advancing Justice LA takes considerable resources. Each year, we must raise funding to support staff salaries, program costs like outreach and education materials, remote working technology, PSA production, all the expenses associated with running our organization. And each year, our corporate partners like Jameson provide financial support through sponsoring our anniversary dinner. 
These companies stand behind Advancing Justice LA because they believe in the work that we do. In fact, one of my first efforts to lead our corporate fundraising strategy was to secure a commitment from my law firm, Sidley Austin. Sidley Austin supports Advancing Justice LA because of the incredible work that it does in the anti-Asian harassment and discrimination world, the immigration work that the organization does, and the legal aid services that it provides to our community. We would like to take a few moments to thank and acknowledge a few notable longtime corporate donors. Thank you to our corporate sponsors who have contributed to our organization for over 25 years. Outstanding partnerships allow us to address issues of civil rights and social justice affecting our communities. In the wake of the COVID-19 crisis, many of our donors committed funding to offer rapid response support to the most vulnerable in our communities. Since the pandemic, many corporate sponsors and numerous community organizations have issued a renewed commitment to fight anti-Asian discrimination and ensure that our most vulnerable communities can access COVID disaster relief support. This spring, the state of California selected Advancing Justice LA to assist over 8,500 undocumented Asian and Pacific Islander immigrants to secure cash assistance. With support from organizations and leaders in our communities, we helped distribute over $4 million to undocumented families in financial need throughout Southern California. Through this initiative, we saw the best in our Advancing Justice LA staff, who developed a comprehensive workflow spanning operations from fielding applicant inquiries, determining eligibility, to distributing disaster relief funding in the midst of COVID safer at home orders. We hired and trained over 40 temporary helpline staff who provided assistance in over 16 Asian languages. Our staff created a full scale operation from scratch in just two weeks. What a gargantuan task. Indeed. Just months into the Safer at Home order, we were all hands on deck with staff, community partners, the state, and others, all to ensure that the most vulnerable members of our community could access financial relief. We were overwhelmed by the response. Our phone lines were flooded from day one with stories of individuals and families who desperately needed help after losing their jobs, falling ill, or caring for their loved ones struggling with COVID. One family of four had been living in the closet of a small apartment. Upon receiving the funding, they wept with joy, excited to head straight to the grocery store as they had not enjoyed a home-cooked meal as a family since COVID. Another elderly individual expressed deep thanks for the financial support. He was living out of his car while going to the hospital regularly for chemotherapy treatments. In addition to the overflow of gratitude from disaster relief recipients, we worked with a cadre of dedicated, hardworking temporary intake staff who signed into our hotlines every single day to serve our communities. These helpline staff served as the backbone of our operations and remained committed for months to making sure that each eligible person could process their application. One staff person shared that working on this project at this time in history was the most meaningful contribution that he felt committed to in his life. And he now serves as Advancing Justice LA's Korean Helpline Advocate. Another intake staffer shared that Advancing Justice LA helped her and her mom obtain citizenship years ago and now she serves as our health access project educator, helping low-income, limited English proficient immigrants secure affordable health services. We are proud to be working with teammates who are passionate about serving our communities. The work we do at Advancing Justice LA, addressing inequities and injustices in our society is only possible due to the support and actions of supporters like you. Many individuals who believe in the mission and work of the organization are new donors. Like one woman who, upon learning about our disaster relief work, donated a portion of her stimulus fund to our organization. Others are longtime supporters, such as our board alumni, who, with a donation from Dr. Susan Chung, has pledged $50,000 towards a special matching challenge. Advancing Justice LA is excited to embark upon a new future and possibilities and opportunities with the arrival of Connie Chung Jo as our new CEO. To celebrate Connie's arrival, to honor the contributions of founder Stuart Kuo, and to celebrate our 37th anniversary, we are excited to announce our Leadership Matching Gift Challenge. During the next 37 days, for each new gift made to Advancing Justice LA, our board alumni and board will match each gift dollar for dollar up to $75,000. So please join us as we begin a new exciting chapter in our fight against racism while celebrating, protecting, and uplifting the diverse people in our AA and HPI community. Make your gift today to leverage your contribution with an equal gift from the 37th Anniversary Leadership Matching Gift Challenge Fund. 
Tell your friends, tell your family, and tell your colleagues. We ask that you consider sharing our virtual celebration video with five friends to help us raise an additional $75,000 to make an even greater mission impact on our community now. To give you some perspective, if we can raise $150,000, that will fund a new staff attorney who can support our anti-Asian American discrimination work within our impact litigation department. Another $100,000 will help us hire a victim's advocate to help hate crimes and discrimination victims and get them the relief they are entitled to under the law. We are excited about the prospect and we hope you join us in this challenge. Before I wrap up here, remember that all you need to do is text the number here. I want to personally thank my fellow board members, board alumni, Dr. Susan Chung, who have already contributed Leadership Challenge funds so that every dollar you contribute will be matched. Remember, this means that for every $100 donation you give, it will turn into $200 to help Advancing Justice LA continue making an impact for our communities. I've considered it a part of my call to action and ask that you consider making it a part of yours as well. For those of you who have already donated, your contributions have just been doubled. Thank you. Isn't that great, Jack? Yes, absolutely, Philip. Thank you for all your support by joining for our virtual celebration, and thank you in advance for supporting our new Leadership Matching Gift Challenge. Thank you, Jack and Philip. It is always moving to hear the stories of people that we serve and work with. And we want to thank those of you who answered our call to action. In fact, I'm pleased to share with you how I was driven to my own call to action. I helped to create a new series for ABC7 called Facism. The word facism means when we make an immediate judgment about someone that we don't know. That quick uninformed judgment leads to stereotyping that is hateful, dangerous, and unfair. Here's a clip on how stereotyping led to the first hate crime after 9-11. We call this episode Equal in the Eyes of God. They are images we will never forget. No matter what we were doing on that beautiful September morning, we stopped everything and watched. It didn't matter if we were there or half a world away. We felt it. It scared us and made us angry. In Phoenix, Arizona, they saw those images on television and the man responsible, Osama bin Laden, with a turban and beard. Balbir Singh Sodi, being of Sikh faith, also wears a turban and beard. He decided to hold a press conference slated for Sunday, September 16th. He wanted to assure his community that they are peaceful people. So on Saturday, he went to the store to purchase an American flag. And while there, he took all the money from his pocket, $75, and put it in a jar to help the victims of 9-11. Minutes later, he would be dead, shot down while planting flowers at his gas station. Balbir's brother, Rana, shows me what happened. We have five people standing here. And this gentleman who, the murderer, he came and parked his pickup right here next to him and shot my brother five times. From the pickup truck? Yeah. He just rolled down the window and started shooting? Shooting, that's it. Only your brother? Yeah. And then he exit from here and make a right turn and go to the bar and, and have a couple drinks. It would be the first official hate crime after 9-11. The murderer was Frank Roque. In the trial, his co-worker said he hated Muslims and Arabs. Bulbeer was neither. He mentioned in the bar, and he said, I want to kill all the towel head people and their children too. I realized ignorance was a thing. I, I had no idea. I was so young at that time. But after his death, I realized that people think in a different way, and they classify others, they misidentify others, and they discriminate. Rose Kaur is Rana's daughter. She was only in second grade when her uncle was killed. But that dark period after 9-11 was a horrible education for such a young child. We would turn on the TV and there was a picture of a man with a beard and a turban and they would be like, terrorists, this is a Muslim terrorist. And this person looked very similar to my parents, my family. And that's very scary, even though Islam and Sikhism is a completely different religion. We all are humankind are equal in the eyes of the God. There's no difference. 
why we hate each other. We need to keep fighting the good fight for social justice. And with that dollar for dollar match from the board, that should be an added incentive. So we'd also like to thank a group of people who have pre-committed donations to our 37th anniversary celebration. So here they are. Bird Morella, Paul Chan, Dr. Susan Chung, Comcast NBC Universal, IW Group, Need a Song, Jameson Properties, Nielsen, Pacific American Fish Company, Peter and G. He Ha, Southern California Gas, The Walt Disney Company, ABC7, Coca Cola, LA County Office of Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, LA County Office of Supervisor Hilda Solis, Capital Group, Munger Tolls and Olson, Anjan Chowdhury, NBC Universal Telemundo, Sydney Austin Jack Ye, UPS. Now I'd like to turn the camera over to our guests who are watching. All of you were sent a candle as a symbol of solidarity and celebration for the work that Advancing Justice LA has done to help immigrants, those who need bilingual assistance, those who are underserved. As promised, we collected those photos and we've assembled them so that you could see the beautiful diversity of our community. Wow, thank you all for those fun moments. I love seeing so many joyous faces. And thank all of you for joining our virtual celebration for our 37th anniversary. As we are entering one of the most important elections in recent history, in a year that has already been so historic in so many ways, we ask that you share with your friends about the vital work we do to address social justice. I wanna thank everyone that participated in today's program. Most of all, I want to thank David Ono for his help today. David, thank you for your work and your call to action against stereotyping and racism. Best of luck with your new show. I do hope all of you watching us will watch the show Facism. See you next year. See you all next year. Thank mm -hmm. you.